No, it's been a tough couple years uh, in the pandemic, really tough. Tough on restaurants, thank God Prezo made it through, well done. Yeah. Please, eat, drink, be merry, be pissed, I don't care, just eat and drink, mostly drink. Um, but the company I think it's been hardest on is the Life is Good company. <laughs> that was their whole gig, Life is Good, during a global pandemic. I mean, by now, all their teachers just have some dude sitting there watching Tiger King 2 doing no swabs. <laughs> My son Ben wrote that joke for me. He's 26. His twin is here in the front row. Uh, three years in prep school, four years in private college, so I think that joke cost me about a quarter million dollars. I honestly thought it was going to do better. <laughs> for that kind of money. Uh, anyway. I was, uh, last summer I was biking down 109 and I crossed over into Medway and I saw a um, auto uh, auto repair shop called Limerick Collision. Anybody know Limerick Collision? Right down on, just over the Medway border. And I thought, Limericks. Every time I think of Limericks, I think of drunken Irishmen. Is that where I want to take my car to get it fixed? Really? I'm just picturing Sean telling Patrick about my car, you know? This man brought his car from then, took it. The A-frame was bent, I said, fuck it. I worked morning till night, she'll never be right. Still, I took his cash for the pub, he can fuck it. And that's the Irish humor for the night, so. Yeah, thank you. I did that joke on a uh, international Zoom show uh, based out of London, and I found myself halfway through the joke going, you idiot, you're doing an Irish accent for Brits? <laughs> Got through it. You guys, um, I'm into movies. Um, you guys, have you ever seen this movie, Coda? It's out there? Yeah, anybody? Good, really good movie about a deaf family. The, the, the wife, the, the, the husband, uh, and the son are all deaf, and they're, they're very poor, they live in a fishing village. The daughter is the only one that can hear, and uh, it's getting a lot of Oscar buzz. People are, we loved it. Um, but as, as, after I watched it, I thought, I really love that movie, but the mother is played by Marley Matlin. The mom knew, I've written on Marley Matlin. And I thought, Marley Matlin, is for white hearing people what Denzel Washington is for them, for black people. He, he, she's like our one deaf friend that makes us feel okay about deaf people. Other than that, we're kind of weirded out and uncomfortable. Marley Matlin, she's been with me my whole life. It's like, my friend Marley, that's, that's, that's who she is. Um, so uh, we booked this show back in uh, January and um, I didn't realize at the time that we'd be doing comedy while Russia is invading Ukraine. Didn't see that coming. Um, and uh, it's very upsetting, but uh, I read a, a tweet that I got to read to you guys. It just, I loved it. I loved it. It's a tweet by an analyst who works for an NGO in Kyiv. Uh, that reads, in Kyiv, a woman knocked down a Russian drone from a balcony with a jar of cucumbers. How did they expect to occupy this country? <laughs> talking nukes, she's talking cukes, all right? She's taking them out with pickled vegetables. It's amazing, it's just amazing. Uh, I've got a soft spot, you may have noticed this over here. I'll tell you what this is right now and then I'll get on with what I want to talk about. This is a new comedy festival, as in all we have is a logo, uh, but we're gonna try to do this on June 3rd and 4th, comics. Uh, we is cheap laughs. Um, and uh, to raise money for uh, Ukrainian refugees in Poland. Um, and we've got a website, uh, Slava Ukraine. I don't know if anybody knows that means to Ukraine. Slava Ukraine at uh, comedyfestival.com. Slava Ukraine comedyfestival.com. Um, you'll be getting emails about it because now I got all your name and email addresses. So trust me, you're hearing about it. Uh, that's that's going to be happening. I'm pretty excited about that. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's it's it, it, it's amazing. Um, and I'm, I'm one quarter Ukrainian. This is one of the reasons this is exciting to me. Or I'm I'm, I'm really you know agitated about the war. It's this part, by the way. It's from here. From here up, in case you're wondering, I think like a Ukrainian, um, and I, uh, I was almost raised by my Ukrainian grandmother. She babysat for us all the time. She was full-blooded Ukrainian. We called her Baba, which is typical. And uh, Baba uh, babysat for the four of us siblings. Um, she raised uh, two boys, virtually on her own, with a drunken husband. She put both her sons through private college on a teacher's salary. She buried her one son, my uncle, when he was 37, and then went on to live another 54 
four years. The point of the story, Putin, you're fucked. <laughs> And then there's Zelensky. I mean, right? I've got a crush on Zelensky. Everybody's got a crush on Zelensky. Of course, for me, the best part about him is he was a comedian, right? We all know this. He had a, a hit sitcom in the Ukraine for three years. He played a teacher who ran for president and got elected. And then he ran for president and got elected. So tonight, I'd like to announce that I will be a candidate for president of the United States in 2024. I figured the last guy was a clown, so we need to we need yeah. The war is not going well. It's been about three weeks. The war is not going well. You keep hearing that. Um, I, I just read that uh, he's even got Viktor Orban and the Swiss turned against him. Viktor Orban and the Swiss? You know who Viktor Orban is? He was the drummer for Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Uh, and he's also the president of Hungary. He turned against him. The Swiss? The Swiss? You lost the Swiss? They never pick a side. They never take sides. They're always trying to make everybody happy. These are the guys who during World War II looked at Hitler and said, that's not our problem. And they chose to back Ukraine in this. These are the guys who always try to make everybody happy. They came up with a, with a knife to make everybody happy. I want a spoon. Sure. Give me a fork. You got it. How about a toothpick? No problem. I want mine with a saw and tweezers and a corkscrew. Okay. Swiss Army knife. Boom. This is the signature knife, the signature weapon of the Swiss Army. These people don't want to pick a side in a war. They want to set the table for dinner. He's in trouble. He's in trouble. He's lost the Swiss. He's lost Viktor Orban. He's lost Trans-Siberian Orchestra. That's another boomer joke. Does anybody under 40 listen to Trans-Siberian Orchestra? Probably not. This guy listened to him. I can tell by the I saw him. I saw them live in Albany. When my daughter here in the front row gave me tickets for Christmas three years ago. Three years ago? We drove round trip to Albany. Yeah, come on, bring it, bring it up, sure. That's clapping for kids raised right. We'll get into that later. Uh, and next to my daughter down front is, is my wife. Been married for 35 years. I think they're clapping for my wife. Everybody claps when I say that at a show. Oh, yeah, that's great. But I think half the people going, I you poor son of a bitch. <laughs> but I've been thinking about this a lot since my, my 35th wedding anniversary last June, June 21st. I know. <laughs> <laughs> What's the secret? How did, how did I get here? What, what am I doing? I'm doing something that's working. And I thought, what is it? You know, what's my secret if I have one to a long-term marriage? And I, I think I figured it out. You guys want to know? My secret to being married to one woman for 35 years? I'm terrified of other women. <laughs> I mean, most men are because we don't understand them, so we're scared. So we do a lot of research. That's why we date a lot of women before we pick one out. We're doing research. We're running clinical trials, okay? I got married to the third woman I ever made out with when I was 24. Made out with is Catholic for hooking up. And uh, so I never completed my clinical trials. I never got FDA authorization for women. I got emergency use authorization for the one woman I married. So if I try other women, I don't know what might happen. Side effects may include dizziness, nausea, Vomiting or an erection lasting longer than four hours. 